Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Studio Live today and another live video where I'm continuing my series this month in the month of May 2020, all about recording an EP on my iPhone and my iPad. If it's your first time here, my name is Pete and my goal here is to help you create, record and release your best music. And I do that through tips and tricks and tutorial videos and live streams just like this one. Now, full disclosure right up front here, this is going to be a little bit of an experimental kind of stream. You can probably already tell because I've got an overhead camera over here. Uh, we're going to be trying a few things. We're going to be seeing how we can get set up so that I can share the process and the experience of recording as best I can. I've tried different things, screen sharing and, and second cameras and things like this. So over the next sort of week, as I start this project, uh, it's going to be a wee bit experimental. So uh, yeah, bear, bear with me while we test this out. But the good thing is you might want to be sharing some things as well. And I find that whenever I'm doing any sort of music creation, I tend to get almost as many questions about how I set up to record my videos about my music as I do about the music itself. Because all of us as musicians and creators are all trying to do pretty much the same thing, which is not only create our best music, but potentially share that music with the rest of the world or with our friends and family or just with ourselves. Whatever you're looking to do, that's uh, what we'll jump in and start doing. So in the video today, the plan is that what I'm going to do, uh, if you missed last the last stream from yesterday, uh, I will link that down in the description if you're watching on the replay. You can go back and catch up on that. But what I did is I took you through the, the five tracks that I'm currently planning to put in my EP. I did put a question out there and I'm going to ask again in case you missed the last video. Should I also record, should I also write and record a brand new song? What we're going to start with is bringing together the tracks that I already have, the, the original versions of them, to have a bit of a review and then make the decision, make the call on, do we need complete re-records? Do we need to remix? Do I need to add in parts? Do I need to re-record vocals? What do we need to do with this? Because the five songs I have are all in different stages of finish. And the one you heard there on the way in, was my song called No Apologies, which we talked about yesterday will definitely be on the album and probably the last track. Probably track five will be No Apologies, and it's it's pretty nicely mixed. I might do some remixing, some remastering, just to make it fit within whatever the rest of the EP becomes, but that's what we're doing. Let's say good day to the folks who are here live, and then uh, we will jump in and get started with the actual process. So we do have a bunch of folks watching live. Hello to Langston, Lang Langston, Langston Reese. Hello to you. Hope you're doing well. Inhuman uh, Quake, uh, Cleggy Official. Hope you're doing well. The journey begins. Absolutely. We'll be kicking on and getting started here. Metallion 58 is here. Yep, yep. It's an iPad, not an iMac. It is indeed. Apologies if you're hoping for some Mac-related fun. Uh, jump over. Check out... Uh, Garage Band and Beyond, Lewin Berenger. You've got uh, Garage Band Guy with Patrick uh, Baird. You've got Dean Davis in the songwriting studio. Heaps of folks creating on Garage Band for Mac. Uh, I'm just not one of them. <laughs> uh, we've got Wyatt Tomlin. Hello to you. We've got 1,000 Watts. Hello to you. LC Music Tracks is here. Dean Thornquist. Haven't seen you for a while. Hello to you. G'day to Rage5606. And uh, Tom says, yes, you should add a new song, in my opinion. Got to give something new to build excitement. I kind of think the same thing. So I'm thinking that, yeah, we may we may also, in the background, in the, in the giant three-week time period we have here, we'll perhaps write and create a new song as well. Uh, that, that's the way I'm leaning as well. Anyway, let's jump in and start doing some music stuff, shall we? Because it's all good to talk about it, but let's do it. Now, if everything is working correctly, which is always a big if and but here on a live stream, I should be able to tap on this one. And we have camera two. Hello, camera two. Uh, yeah, so this is just using my iPhone. I've just got my iPhone 7 here at the moment. We're going to test different things. I'll try my iPhone 10s next time. I'm going to try a second webcam to see if we can get that happening. And uh, yeah, we'll try some screen sharing as well. So let me know how this goes. What sort of, uh, what sort of uh, resolution this is coming through if this is going to be something easy to follow along because... When I've just been screen sharing in the past, I haven't been able to show sort of what I'm connecting, haven't been able to show my interface and how I set things up here. So I thought having this might be good for you to be able to see and follow along with what I'm doing. So let's just give it a quick test run, shall we? We will uh, 
come on in. So this is a track. Now, you can tell here that uh, that these, these are the drums that Jade Starr programmed for me. So Jade talked about this yesterday, but you can see that the drums are all separated out onto their own track, which is very cool there. Uh, we've got bass, we've got a heap of different vocals and, and guitars, a few keyboard instruments in here, and this is my song, No Apology. So let's just do a quick test listen. I'll bring this up. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> That was yeah. That, that was uh, that was a different one. You'll notice here that I have the output of this, so I couldn't get this phone to not be playing back, and even at its lowest volume, I couldn't mute it, and I could hear I could hear this faint sort of delay, and it sounded a lot like uh, a lot like this, like this, like this. <laughs> so I didn't want that. So I'll bring it in on these channels. This is a beauty part of having uh, the mixer here, the the um, Zoom Live Track L8. It works well for stuff like this. Let's have a bit of a a bit of a listen and a look and make sure that all of our setup is working well here. We'll hit play. Maybe I scrap things a little too thin. Maybe I'm trying too hard just to win. But my intentions are wrong. That was just uh, that was what it sounded like originally with just the uh, the acoustic guitar and the vocals. So that at my end at least is sounding okay and coming through fine and dandy. Let me know if you're getting a decent high quality and stereo stream coming in at that end. We are using Streamyard, which is why we've got the two the two screens here and uh, the chat and everything that I can throw up on the screen. So uh, it's not going to be perfection in terms of the audio quality. When we get to the point where I'll be mixing and mastering, I won't be using Streamyard. I'll switch over to OBS, which is the other system that I use, because that gives me much higher quality audio. I can turn up the bit rate on the audio and you'll be able to hear it much better. But for the purposes of demonstrating what we're doing today, getting the mix started, just showing you some of these songs and where they're at, this way should work pretty well. So uh, let me know, drop a comment and let me know how that is uh, how that is sounding at your end and making sure it's working okay. White Tomlin says you should release a movie. Um, sure. I mean, I do I do a video every day. A movie about, about what? Like a, a fictional movie? A documentary, maybe? Documentary movie? <laughs> uh, hello to Ven, Ven Quarry, here for the first time. Love your videos. Thank you very much, Ven. Good to have you here for the show and I hope you enjoy it. Um, Langston says that's a giant song. Yeah, I probably need to clean up a little bit. It looks bigger than it, it is mostly because of Jade's uh, epic drums there, taking up about six, seven tracks. But yeah, there are lots of backing vocals in there, uh, a couple of uh, keys down the bottom there, and the guitars up the top here. So yeah, I suppose there's, there are a bunch of tracks here. This will be a, a fun one to sort of show you around as we get to. Uh, Inhuman Quake says, which button do I need to press in GarageBand to make my song in order of section without sounding at all messy? What do I need to make my song in order of section right without sounding all messy? Not 100% sure what the question is there, sorry. Uh, hopefully we'll cover all those sort of topics uh, as we go through here as well. Uh, hello to Sun Ray, always good to see you here, my friend. We've got Desolate Morning, he's jumped in. Jade Star, your ears must have been burning because I was just talking about you, mostly because it was you who programmed all of these epic drums hope you are doing well jay good to have you here uh, arnell great to have you on board as well and johnny vans checking in hello to everyone hope you are doing well so the plan here is what i'm going to do is bring together so i'm going to do a little bit of organization because i'm a bit you might see a lot of this stuff and go oh that's not very organized at all and it's not because i haven't done it for a while this is sort of just the landing pad for where i put all of my stuff but if we scroll on up You'll see here that I do have a bit of a folder structure here. So I've got my ideas, my in progress, my completed, background music, miscellaneous, the songs I use in my tutorials, some incomplete stuff, 
archives, collaborations, clients, and my studio live today music. And then I kind of use just this folder as a bit of a scratch pad to leave things in. So what do we need to do? Um, well, first of all, I need to, oh, my keyboard's up here. I have a, I have a second keyboard for my iPad, which is going to get a little bit clunky in here. I'm kind of, as you can probably tell, I'm kind of wrapped around the tripod. So maybe I need to get a mic stand or something so I can bring this in as a boom from the, oh, you can see me whack it, bring this in as a boom from the side so I'm not in as much of an awkward position. And I really can't do anything about this shadow going on down here because uh, I, I need to, yeah, anyway, you, you don't need to know the ins and outs. If you've got ideas, say, Pete, you should try this, you should try that, whatever it is. Uh, let's come in here. So what we need to do is we need to create a new folder within in progress. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go plus. Oh, no, that's, <laughs> it's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a while since I've done this stuff. We need to create a new folder, Pete. So we need to tap and hold new folder. And we're going to call this, we are going to call this EP and the working title, as you would have seen is mayhem. So this is the Mayhem EP, and this is where all of my project file folders, files, are going to go into as we're working on these. Now, the first one that's going to go in there, if we go back to my GarageBand folder, is going to be this one, because this is the final mix of No Apology. So it doesn't have the, the master, because I am going, even though Jade did a wonderful job mastering the original version, when you're doing an EP or an album, you would pretty much want to get all your final mixes and then master them together. That, that's the way I've done it in the past. And I think that it just means that you can listen to them back to back and make sure that if someone is listening to the whole EP, all the masters work well together. So I'll be at least remastering this song, probably not doing a whole lot to the mix. So I've tapped it. What I'm going to do is duplicate that entire project so I can leave that one there. And then this one here, we're going to move it. We're going to select we're going to tap it, we're going to move it, and where do we want to move it to? Wait for it to pop up. Yeah, there we go. I'm like, did that not pop up? We want to move it to our iCloud. Pop down on my, yeah. So, um, yeah, a quick tip here, I know many of you, most of you already know this, but your iCloud drive is the location you generally want to save stuff to because I got another <laughs> got another email and a comment just this morning saying, I just deleted GarageBand and now I've lost all my projects. And I'm like, well, did you save them in your iCloud drive? And I think you and I both know the answer that I got back. So save them in your iCloud drive and back them up and do all the things. So we're going to come here to in progress. We're going to put it into this one and then we're going to tap on move. And boom, that's going to send it on over. So that's our first project in there. So now for all the other videos you see, we're going to be jumping into the in-progress folder, into EP Mayhem, and this is where it's all going to be happening. This is where the action's going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, because my, my structure is not great here, I'll probably use the search box because this is, when I don't know where a project is, this is generally how I find it. So there's a couple of uh, couple of songs and let, let's see if we can search for them by name. So the other one we want is Hold On. And do I not even have it here? The, the beautiful part is that, I'm, see, I'm searching in recent. No, I don't want to mean recent. iCloud Drive, there we are. So there is Hold On, there is the Hold On Final Mix. So for once, Peter's actually done a decent job. He's put Hold On Final Mix. Now, you'd probably be aware that the this little icon means that it's on my iCloud drive, but it's not on this iPad. So all I need to do is tap on it, and it's going to go away and download it, and probably take up all the bandwidth that I'm using here. So suddenly, the, if the streak goes a bit glitchy, then uh, that's probably why. So we'll, uh, we'll let that one download, and we'll bring that off over, and have a bit of a look and listen at that project. But while we do that, while that happens, let's bring us back over. <laughs> too many, too many mice, too many keyboards. Boom. Um, that will bring us back over and say good day to other folks who are here. See if we've got any questions. Uh, that's where we were up to. <laughs> Jade says, uh, yeah, didn't, uh, notification didn't happen. Glad I made it. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't promote this one. Um, uh, because I'm doing something sort of every day. Just, just assume that I'm kind of always live around about this time. This is where I'll be. This is where I'll be and what I'll be doing. But yeah, I'll try and, I'll try and get more notifications out um, and be a little bit more active on the social media stuff. Facebook was actually down before I started. So I think Facebook have got some issues and that's where I normally throw out my, um, my notifications as well so that folks don't miss them. Uh, Desolate Mornings has been messing with those drums with the tip you taught me, Jade, which is cool. Yes, Jade is definitely uh, the one to go to if you want to learn how to make very cool drum sounds. Um, Sion is here. Hello to you, Sion. Always good to see you here, my friend. 
Uh, Johnny Van said, I'm curious what song, if any, you'll use as a reference when mixing this down later, more than one. Yeah, so uh, and I've never really shown my ref my referencing process here on the channel, mostly because as soon as I reference with an actual track, uh, it puts me into very, uh, very murky copyright waters. So what I'll probably do is do a do a video on referencing, but I'm going to, going to have to be very careful about what clips of what songs I show and use. If you're not familiar with referencing, what that means is when you are, usually when you're mastering, sometimes when you're doing a final mix, what I'll do is I'll do a final mix, but I'll just sort of throw a limiter on just so that it can bring it up to kind of a mastered volume, and then I'll mix it against there. So the sort of tracks that I'll probably use here that I want to kind of sound like, interesting question, because um, it's sort of acoustic. If you've got suggestions, you've got ideas for, for who I sound like, who it should be. In the past, I've used our, our bands like R.E.M. for sort of my more mellow tunes, uh, the Foo Fighters for more of the rocky kind of tunes. Although Foo Fighters are a little bit too intense for me. The Killers I like because I've got some keys and some guitars and some vocals in my songs. So I tend to, some of the more low-key Killers tunes I've used uh, as reference tracks in the past. So uh, And uh, there's a, an acoustic artist called Pete Murray. I really like the way that uh, his his songs are, are, mastered, are mixed and mastered, um, really nice. And it's probably why I overdo my vocals. I put my vocals up too loud because I listen to a lot of Pete Murray and he has very upfront, present, compressed vocals um, and very sort of sparse acoustic um, instrumentation. So that's probably, that's my excuse anyway. I blame you, Pete Murray. Uh, so yeah, let me know what I should be doing, uh, what I should be doing it against. Um, all righty, cool, cool. Let's jump back over because the track has opened, so I should be able to bring, hello, camera two. There we go. <laughs> so I'll bring up and take a look at, oh, at the mix here. Now I've got, as usual, I've probably not named these well, and I've probably just left it. And, oh, no, I've done okay here. But why do I have a whole bunch of stuff muted out? I don't know. We have to work out. I think, I think these all should just be unmuted. But let's just play this back, and we'll review this because... Um, the reason I've actually named these okay is this is the the project, and we talked about it yesterday, and uh, check check yesterday's video because I didn't get around to actually linking to it, but you can actually go and review. Uh, you can actually download these tracks and download the stems and also download this project. So if this isn't the right version, I can actually go back and re-download it myself. So we'll, uh, we'll see, but let's hit play and take a listen, shall we? Make sure we've got some volume. There we are. Life is long and you have much time You're in a rush and you don't know why You want it all and you want it now But you doubt your talent and you don't know how Yeah, I've definitely been playing around with this, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see I've been, I think I've been using this, and this is a, a silly thing I do. I use these projects um, to demonstrate things, and then I don't, I don't sort of duplicate them properly, and then suddenly they've got different things on them. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can clearly hear the, the two vocals. So I think what it's supposed to be, this one's probably supposed to be down here as the doubled vocal. So if we play it back. Look around at what others do. Think it's easy, so why not? Yeah, that's definitely the way it's supposed to be. And I don't I don't even remember why I've got all these. But success is an overnight, so if you want to win Yeah, I think I just left all the different vocals in there. Uh, I'm I'm probably gonna have to grab the original version that I shared, the project there, and bring that across here and uh, use that one. But for now, just so that I've got a version in there, I'm gonna go out there and save it and we'll uh we'll oh see this is the problem. We don't have that oh there, there we go. We're still searching. Oh no. Now that I don't know where it is, I can't use the select button. This is going to be a pain. Uh, hold on. If I tap and hold on it, can I do that? There we go. If you tap and hold, you can then move because I didn't know where it was. And then as soon as I pressed cancel, I couldn't select it and I didn't know where it was. So I didn't know how to get to it. Uh, all right. But I don't want to do that first because I want to actually duplicate it first. So I don't want to make that same mistake. So tap and hold, release, duplicate, boom. So we got that one, tap and hold, release, and move it. 
and then we can put it over here into our EP. And there you go, two tracks are in the folder, or two projects that we'll be working on are in the folder, ready to go. Now, what were the other songs that I was going to work on? Ah, my song called Perfect was the other one. So let's go away and find that. There it is. Now, this one never really got past. I can't even really remember what I put in this. It never got past just the kind of acoustic demo phase. So I never actually finished recording it. But we are going to jump in and download it now and take a look and a listen. Um, but yeah, with, with that version of Hold On, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go back to, <laughs> I'm going to go download it from Dropbox, my own Dropbox. This is, you know, this is, this is how I roll. I don't actually know where it is, and I don't have the version here on my iPad. Uh, you might notice I'm using my iPad Air 2 here at the moment. I had a weird situation with, is it in the background? It's over there. You can't see it. My iPad Pro first gen, I plugged that in to my Steinberg UI22C, and I, I haven't used it much with the Steinberg. Um, I've been using my iPad Air 2 and my iPhone XS, and they've been working fine. With the iPad Pro first gen, I got a weird delay, and it was like a latency of about one second. And it was so bizarre. Like I was, I'd go, ha, huh? and it would go, ha. Huh? Like we're literally about a second lag and I don't know what the cause was. So uh, I'll be investigating that a little bit more as we continue on. While that downloads again, uh, we'll jump over. I know we're a bit disjointed here today, but uh, yesterday I did the show and then I'm like, oh, I hope that was okay. And then most of the comments I got were actually very positive. People said, I loved uh, seeing over your shoulder and seeing the thought process going in. So hopefully this is adding value in that way. We will be jumping in and obviously doing more of the actual creation and you'll be able to uh, to see that um, in, the f in the future. Uh, Jade's got a really good, uh, really good suggestion here. Download documents by Rattle. You really should. Been using it for almost ten years. It's the first thing I install on an iOS device. Yeah, and I probably should get better at using documents to move my stuff around. Uh, the one thing it doesn't do super well is zip files. It kind of tries to unzip them, but then doesn't work that well for me. So I tend to fall back to the Files app for compressing and uncompressing. But everything else, managing your files, yes, I agree. Use um, Rattle documents works well. Hello, uh, TIE Fighter 34, like the avatar. Very cool. Um, uh, Rage says, uh, I have seen some videos showing the many songs that are made from the same three chords. You up for something like that? Uh, yeah, it, it is interesting. Um, there's an there's a Australian comedy band act called Axis of Awesome, and they've got their three chords song. I can't play it or show it here because it'll instantly give me a copyright uh, claim. But um, yeah, look up Axis of Awesome and their three chord song. Super fun. Um, worth checking out. Uh, I'll just see if anyone else has got anything. Bare Naked Ladies could be a good reference. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, that, that, that's, kind, that's definitely the sort of, uh, the sort of music. Uh, yeah, acoustic guitars, a bit more rocky. Yeah, I, I like that. And, and the same, the vocalist for Ben Naked Ladies is sort of similar-ish to me. Not, not exactly. But yeah, I, I reckon that's, I reckon you're in the right mind, right, right thing. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, hello to you. How do you do, how do you think? Is it possible to plug guitar processor to phone by USB if I had it? Uh, so yeah, we can talk real, really quickly about the setup that I have here. If we uh, we'll bring that back into the mix, boom. Uh, so yeah, the the this uh, device here, and you might have seen a video I released uh, about ten hours ago, uh, all about troubleshooting USB devices being plugged into your iPhone or iPad. So the key bit of gear is this, the Lightning to USB three adapter. So the way I've got this set up here, you can see that I've got. The USB 3 adapter, this is going out to my powered hub. So uh, the the power port of my powered hub, uh, oh, I'm tapping on that one. And then this is can, this is the actual hub itself. So this is going over here to, in fact, I've got, I can move this because I have, have it on a stand. So you can, uh, down in the background, you can see the powered USB hub at the back there. So uh, yeah, this is a beautiful part of having this uh, set up. I won't be able to put it back in the right position now, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, that's close enough. Uh, yeah, so what we're saying. So, yes, yeah, so that goes to the powered hub and then that plugs directly into the USB port of the Steinberg interface. Now, pretty much anything that you want to... Oh, sorry, the Steinberg goes into the powered hub, as you probably saw. Um, and there's four ports there. So I could plug in this uh, and I also do have my mouse and keyboard. So I've got my wireless USB mouse 
and keyboard over here that you can't see out of shot. They're plugged into another port. I've still got two ports free. In fact, I've got a USB drive in one and I've got another port free over there. So that if you had a guitar processor, as long as it's USB and it's class compliant, meaning it doesn't need drivers to run, then you'll be able to connect it up using this same setup. And if, because uh, I know Jade Star will jump in on this, if you're lucky enough to have an iPad or that has USB-C, you don't even need this. You can use any generic or any branded USB-C adapter. So any hubs, any, um, any docking stations, and that's really cool because you can connect up USB devices, HDMI, headphones, network, LAN cables like the works. So that's very, very cool. Um, but yeah, good, good question and probably good um, relevant thing to show here in this video because you might want to know the setup here uh, behind the scenes of what we're doing. We're not adding effects, so we'll get rid of that. Um, righty dokey. So I'll just, uh, so Jeff says I have documents, but don't really know what to do with it. I'm so bad at all this stuff. Uh, yeah, join the club. Uh, you'd think that I would be better and be better organized. As you've already seen in this video, I'm kind of not. So don't feel bad. Uh, let's just all work on it together, shall we? Let's all make a, make a pact to get our files organized in the month of May. And maybe, maybe I'll do a, a video all about documents, uh, this month as well. Sounds like folks, uh, folks would be interested. It might help folks out. Uh, hello, Skullbound. Thank you for teaching me how to tempo change mid-song because I wanted to do this uh, beat switch. Thanks. Uh, no, no problem. No problems at all. Uh, so yeah, GarageBand itself doesn't have the ability to change tempo. Uh, but in a video, if you search Pete John's tempo change, it shows you how to basically bring two projects together, change the tempo halfway through, uh, if, if that's what you want to do. Let's jump over and take a listen. While we're in here, let's take a listen to this track and see where we're at. So this is my song called Perfect. And as you can see here, eventually it just came together as a guitar vocal. I'll turn on the metronome because I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see whether I actually recorded it to a click. So let's hit play. I did. Life isn't always fair Everyone has their problems It's easy to hide away So, yes, so that's what we've got so far in here. Now, it's actually a bit a bit slower than how I play it now. I haven't listened to this original recording for a while. And when I play it now, it's like, do, 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 do. So I probably play it around oh, three, four. I probably play around 150 BPM. It's interesting looking at this, and I've got it set at 134 BPM. Uh, let's see what original drums that I actually had in here. So I, I see, yeah, I see. I did, it, do, it does say here, you can't really see it that well, but it says drum click. So this is clearly the drums that I played along to when I first recorded it. Which isn't really anything that suits the song. If we come down here. It's easy to hide away. Well, it kind of does. And harder to find solutions. But I know. <coughs> That's some delay. Pete's really gone hard with the delay, that one. Um, yeah, so... It's an okay drum, and what you'll notice there, that the way I set these up, I'll show you this because we'll, there'll be there'll be little nuggets of tips along the way. By the way, that's the way these videos will work uh, because I'll just be doing it, and then if an idea comes up that I need to make a more in-depth video on, I can do that. But if we come here into the drummer and see how I've set this up, I see I've, I do have fills on. <laughs> I do have some fills. Normally, I'd say I, I was about to come in here and say, so see how I don't have any fills on, and how I've got it like a nice, loud, and simple beat. Well, I kind of don't. I've got the fills on. So I'm not taking my own uh, my own advice here. I've actually put fills on for this drum track. But ordinarily, I would drop that down and therefore not have any fills. And that way you get a nice steady rhythm and beat. And I, I would have, <laughs> I'm assuming, recorded these two along to this, which is why I've got drums click. And then this is reminded future Pete that this is exactly how it's set up. Uh, let's have some fun and listen to what the heck is down here. This looks like a whole bunch of attempted vocals or something. Now, I don't even, I, this is a bit dangerous because I don't actually remember what these are. There's, there's probably going to be swear words and all sorts in here, but let's, uh, we'll mute that vocal and we'll come in here and take a listen. What have I got? Life isn't always fair. You know what that is? That sounds like, that sounds like me singing while I'm walking around. Let's just solo that. 
Oh, it is. Listen to that horrible breathing of the birds. And everyone has their problems. Yeah, that's beat. Walking around and singing, and I'd imagine these are all a bunch of takes where I'm working through how I want the how I want to actually sing the track. Let's try this one. It's easy to hide away. All right, so that one sounds more like I'm back in the studio but still don't have a mic plugged in, so probably just trying some more variations on that. And what do we have here? Oh, I'm outside again. <laughs> and harder to find solutions. Yep, that's, that's me testing things out. This one, am I outside or in? I roll the dice. But oh, I know back out. this for sure. Life doesn't have yeah, so and I do remember this now. It is coming back to me when I was first recording this demo. So I did record this track. So I recorded the drums and the guitar. And then, uh, oh, so I've got some other guitars here that I never did anything with. But I, I've got the, I had the guitar and the drums. And then I took it out on my iPhone. And I was recording literally just using, uh, do I have it handy? This thing here. So this is like my absolute favorite uh, set of headphones. These are called the JBL Endurance Run. And these are good because they've got, they're basically like little in-ear monitors here. So they isolate the sound really well. And they're just a TRRS adapter. So I need to use my little dongle dearly, which you can't see. Well, you can because it's on that one. Uh, dongle dearly to record in. Uh, so yeah, I, I basically recorded this on the iPad and then plugged, like sh shot it over. Well, it's already on iCloud Drive. So downloaded it onto the iPhone, plugged these in, walked around, and that's where you can see I recorded all of these tracks. And then when I got back to the studio, I sat down and listened to those and went, oh, okay, that, 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 that. Grabbed my microphone, plugged in into the interface and recorded that track to get the demo down. So yeah, a little bit of a little bit of behind the scenes of my process. But yeah, if you, if you need some in-ear buds, these are great for phone calls, Zoom calls, Skype calls, um, for recording, for listening to music and podcasts. They're only about $20 US to buy and they're over on my gear guide, studiolivetoday.com slash gear if you want to pick up a pair. I... Uh, to, to show you how much I love them. Oh, I can't do that. I was going to say, to show you how much I love them, I was going to open my drawer and show you that I have um, like a bunch of them. So there's another two pairs in boxes down there ready for when I need replacements of these ones. Because I'm like, I don't know. What, maybe they'll stop making them. I want to make sure I have plenty. I think I've made this go all blurry by bumping it, which it shouldn't do because it should have a decent quality. Let's put... Well, losing everything here today. The beauty, beauty part of live streaming. Uh, let's pop that over for a minute and let that catch up a little bit and knock over my thing. Uh, uh, Desolate Morning says I keep freezing at my end. Uh, hopefully that's not happening for other folks, but let me know uh, if, you're, if you're having some issues. <laughs> Hello to Fallen Creature. I hope you are doing well here, my friend. Um, uh, Paris, hello to you. Any tips for recording woodwind instruments? What kind of mic and placement would uh, be ideal for iPad GarageBand? Yeah, so I haven't, so full disclosure, I haven't personally recorded, um, recorded woodwind instruments myself, but the basic principles are kind of the same, which is, which is that you generally, so the louder stuff, you generally want to go with a dynamic microphone. So the old SM57, the Shure SM57, is the industry standard kind of for a reason. Um, so, yeah, I would uh, I would explore that. If you want something, so if it's a quieter instrument, so say like a flute uh, that's not going to be as loud, you may want... Is a flute woodwind? It's not made of wood. Is it? I think it classifies as woodwind because it's not... But woodwind technically is uh, instruments that use a reed, yeah. That's why it's wood. Not It's not what they are made of um but yeah for those sort of acoustic instruments uh, you can also use a, a condenser microphone so uh, a large diaphragm if you're buying one microphone what i always say is buy a large diaphragm condenser because you can basically record anything you can record acoustic guitar you can mic up an amp cabinet as long as you turn the gain down nicely um 
yeah, so there, there's a there's a, a, a bunch of options there. But I would, uh, if you've got two microphones, what I'd say is buy an Audio Technica AT2020, which is like a good all rounder for your condenser mic side, and then a Shure SM57, which is a good one if you've got a really loud volume or you want something you want to reject more noise because that's the other thing. A condenser mic like this one picks up a lot of background noise, a lot of ambient noise, which might not be good if you've got like something that you want to pick up the detail of. And then, yeah, go with a dynamic mic. That was a little bit rambly, I know, but hopefully that worked. <clears throat> um, uh, Inhuman, I meant the timing. I meant was timings my songs. Oh, that might have been in relation to what we were talking about before. Uh, hello, Signature Music Services. Um, and hello, Jupiter Falls. Pete going hard to hit them feelings. I know this is this this EP is going to be a bit draining because it's uh, a lot of the songs are are a little bit deep and meaningful. Really, uh, I probably need to put some sort of. I think that the the mystery song I'm going to put in the middle needs to be a bit of fun. Otherwise, everyone's going to get like a little bit too deep, and by the end, you'll be like, "Oh man, that's too much." <laughs> Uh, da, da, da. Hello to Rage Says I'm looking for a full tutorial on GarageBand For idiots <laughs> Using three or four installed sounds Edit and play a two minute beat or so And save the finished beat So it can be used in a homemade video So this is something that I've been meaning I've been, I started doing similar sorts of things So you, you may want to check out some of the videos But I, I don't sort of have an end to end one I think one of these days Soon, probably just after May, once I've finished this EP, I need to actually create that because I know a lot of people want to create background music for videos. They want to learn how to make their own instrumentals or beats, as the kids say. And I think it might be worthwhile to do like an hour long video that's just like do this, 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 use use this loop, like basically a follow the bouncing ball type tutorial. So is that the sort of thing you that you're looking for? Um, because I've, I have looked around too, and there's not actually Dan Baker has got one video. If you search Dan Baker Garage Band, he's got a, it's a few years old now, but it's same sort of principle. He basically does that. He takes you through all the instruments and an entire song end to end. So uh, yeah, if you're not familiar with Dan, search Dan Baker. Uh, Jade says, just sent you the version of Things Have Changed I covered in Garage Band as a zip project. Oh, very cool. They, that, that might give me a head start, Jade. Thank you. Uh, if, you don't, if you're not familiar, uh, Things Have Changed is a song I wrote um, it's, it's, I'm considering putting it at the end or somewhere in the EP. It's kind of a bit on the edge at the moment. Uh, and it's a piano vocal song. Uh, Jay did a, a backing track and then covered it in one of her live shows. Uh, and folks like jo Joey Helpish and Glenn Clark and other folks around the channel have also sort of done additional covers and bits to it. So it's kind of already been a collaborative process. So, um, I will, I will take a look, uh, at that when you send it through, Jay, that would be cool and, uh, see, see what you got there. Uh, because any shortcut, any help will be appreciated in this process. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, Andreas, hello to you. If I connect my condenser microphone to an audio interface, a Scarlett Solo, and my Beats Studio headset as well, will the little microphone that comes with a Beats cable intervene? Uh, use GarageBand. Uh, yeah, good question. <clears throat> so let, uh, we'll, we'll jump in over here. And uh, we'll bring back up my display. That's looking a little clearer. Not great. Next time I'm around, I'm going to go with the uh, the iPhone XS and maybe put it, maybe use the mobile data instead, so it's not all using my same. Although I've got, I did a, I did a broadband check, and the MBN is functioning well at the moment. So hopefully it's all coming through okay. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I was answering this question from Andres, which is uh, around connecting your microphone. So here's how it all breaks down, is as soon as you connect up an audio interface to your iPhone or iPad, these become the inputs, and this and that, the outputs, become the outputs. So you plug in headphones, you plug in line outs, that's the audio out. The audio out no longer comes through the headphone jack, if your iPhone has a headphone jack at all. And so the question you're having here is, if you had headphones that have a microphone in them, Excuse me, have to sneeze. <coughs> if you have a headphone that has a microphone in them, then you can still plug those in because the beautiful part is that this TRS jack won't care if you if you plug in something that has a TRRS. And if you actually plug in using one of the adapters, here's one I prepared earlier, like this. So if you've got if your headphones have a you can see that this is only a TRS anyway. So this is tip ring sleeve. It's only got the three poles there. So it won't actually send your mic. So if I plug, for instance, if I plug these into this like that, and then plug this into here like that, 
It's only a TRS connection now, right? So the beautiful part is you can go backwards. TR TRRS, you can go backwards to TRS. So it'll just push through the audio. It won't push do anything with the mic connection because it's smart enough to know that you've only got TRS at the other end because it's adapted here. So a short way of answering that is, yes, it won't pick up your microphone if you plug in headphones that have a mic, which is handy. Um, but you can't plug them directly into here. It has to go into your audio interface if that is the case. Hopefully that helps you. Um, <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Paras. Uh, sorry that the, the yeah, I, I was a bit rambly there, but yeah, short SM57 for a dynamic or uh, Audio Technica AT2020 for a compressor, a compressor, condenser mic. <laughs> Hello, Valium FM. I'm here for the goats. Yes, uh, I, I was the Valium FM uh, is been a long time supporter of the channel and uh, loved the song Goats when we first released it. Um, does does a lot of uh, a lot of music work as well. Um, loves a bit of a little bit of the humour comedy side of things and uh, we did we played a live version of Goats and I was thinking of you when I was playing the live version of Goats yesterday. Will they add a pipe organ to the garage band anytime soon? Um, probably not. We already got a bunch of organs, don't we? You got the rock organ, the soul organ, the what, heavy metal organ. You got your whirly. You got your e piano. Um, I, I I wouldn't hold your breath. But there are um, there are good organ uh, standalone plugins that you can explore. Uh, right now, where were we? <laughs> we got a little bit off track there, but that's okay because. I want to make sure that you get some value. And if people have questions, we'll talk about them. So let's come out of here. Now that we've had a bit of a look at that one, we'll do the same thing we did before. Now, here was the problem I was having, right? Because I searched for it, it, it tells you where it is if you tap and hold. In fact, let's see if we can solve this. Tap and hold and go info. It'll tell us where I've saved this. So it's in iCloud Drive, GarageBand for iOS, number three completed. Okay. But there's no, oh, is there, I was going to say, there's no way to go straight there. If I tap on that, Ah, oh, I just learnt me something new. How about that? <laughs> you go to info and then it gives you a link to go straight into the folder. See, I, 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 was, I was about to have to go and navigate through to that folder. There you go. See, there's always something new you can learn. And sometimes just doing these sort of things will help you get there. Here it is, perfect V3. So I'm going to tap select. I'm going to tap on that one. We're going to tap duplicate to get this version here. And then we're going to tap and hold. We're going to move it. And where are we going to... Stick it back here in EP Mayhem. There you go. We got uh, three of our tracks there ready to go. Now, the fourth track, I'm going to have to go to my notes and remember what the heck it was. Uh, perfect. Hold on. No apologies. What was I talking? Some, someone will probably tell me. See, you folks are going to know more about this EP than I will by the time I get there. Uh, where's my songwriting section? Songwriting. Uh, fence sitter. That's what it was. You're probably all yelling at me. Uh, Fence Sitter is the final song. So let's find this one because I think similarly I have a version of this on here. So if we search Fence. By the way, I, ooh, a keyboard and mouse for your iPad is the best thing. I know, Jade, you've just got the magic keyboard, yeah? Tell everyone how awesome it is. You're telling me how cool it is to have that. Do I not have it? Maybe I don't have a, this on here. I would have called it Fence Sitter, surely. Uh, recent search. Am I just searching in the wrong spot? No. <laughs> That's a bit weird. Um, yeah, okay. So may maybe, maybe I record... So I've probably not taken my own advice here. I've probably recorded this on something else. So let's take a quick squiz. If we go to... <laughs> If we go to this I, iPhone, maybe I just, because it was only ever really a demo, maybe I put it on, maybe I put it on my iPhone storage and not on the uh, actual iCloud drive, which would have been silly, but uh, let's see if that's the case. Fence. Oh, we're getting some, <laughs> I did. Look at it, it's sitting there. There it is. I can't see it, but yeah, it's here on my iPhone. That's all right. I deliberately did this to show you how easy it can be here to move things across. Uh, sure, Pete, we believe you. Uh, right, so let's let's now go into, not into GarageBand, I'm going to go into my Files app so I can be in dark mode and you might actually be able to see this. So if we go to Files and we go, here we are. So it's not in dark mode anyway, so you're not going to be able to see a bloody thing. Let's engage dark mode, shall we? Ah, nope. There we go, the dark side. That's going to be a bit better. So now on my iPhone, if we search, not fence sitter, if we search fence sitter, 
there it is. So now what we can do is I'll tap and hold on this one and we're going to move this and we're going to move it. See that this is the beauty part is that we can move this straight over to iCloud Drive and put it in that same location and then it's going to magically appear over on our iPad. So if we go to In Progress, EP Mayhem, and it's going to copy it because it's going from the device to iCloud Drive. And over here, has that actually worked? No, I'm in the wrong spot. I was going to say, and over here, it's already popped up, but it's not far away. Where are we? iCloud Drive, In Progress, EP Mayhem. Um, there it is. So now all I need to do is tap that one, and it's going to download over here on my iPad. So yes, I, I saved it. See, imagine, imagine how funny that would have been if uh, I just finished emailing someone saying, oh, well, if you, don't, if you don't save your files on your iCloud drive and you don't back them up, well, then you're going to lose your stuff, aren't you? And then I've, if I lost my version of this song because I did exactly that, that would have been kind of hilarious, just quietly. Um, oh, I'm, I'm perched on the edge of this seat uh, and I'm popping my peas a bit too. Bring that microphone down. Oh, not that far down, Pete. I need to, I need to tighten my, um, my boom arm. On my phone. a lot, all that maintenance stuff. Do you find that, that you're so busy just creating and doing music and and doing the fun stuff that you're like? I think about two months ago, I went, oh, I really need to really need to fix this. And and let me show you something really embarrassing. Look at this. Look at how many times this is wrapped around here. This is a very much a do as I do as I say, not as I do. Because my goodness, that's going to be creating all sorts of problems. This cable's going to break. One day I'll be halfway through a stream. And it'll cut out, and it will be because Pete's ruined his XLR cable by wrapping it around his stand. Uh, we are just filling for time because we're waiting for that to happen, which has now happened. So here is here is Fence Sitter. Now, what is going on here? Did I just record this all down to one track? Let's let's see what we have here. This is a bit of an interesting discovery process for me too. I have a lot of oh, I did. I put it all on one track. I may not say a lot of them I let the words come out Every now and then I can't remember why I recorded those both to one track. Uh, can you confirm, also just, uh, yeah, confirm that the audio is coming through okay. I did ask before. I'm assuming you would all yell and scream if it's not. So if I'm just playing things and you can't hear them, then I'm assuming that you'll tell me. <laughs> so please do. Uh, what's on this second track then, if that's that one? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Let's put this back in. And no, unless you choose to ask. Sometimes it's easier to fly. When you're just too tired to fight. I'm a fancy sitter. Yeah, I like that with that do, 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 do. I remember, <laughs> see, again, I, I haven't listened to these songs for so long that I forgot that I did this. So I've recorded it as just a, a demo, so a guitar vocal demo, all on the one track, as you can see there. So that would have been literally the, the mic I was talking about before, the AT2020. Uh, when I'm recording mic and vocal, like voice, mic and vocal, voice and guitar at the same time, I'll just sort of put that halfway between the two. And then just get a decent balance and record both. So I've done that with that first track. And then this track uh, was actually when I was recording, I recorded directly from my piano. So I've got a Casio piano out in the uh, in the kitchen dining room area. And yeah, I recorded that in here as a stereo track. So this is, this is an audio. So this would have been recorded on this, on the Steinberg UR22C. Uh, if you want to learn how to do that, to record any stereo source to a two-channel interface, just search Pete John's Stereo Record. There's a video where I show you how to hook everything up. And yeah, and I, I really like the electric piano sound I get on the keyboard, on my actual piano. So that sounds like, uh, like this. Of course, it helps when you hit the right notes, which I clearly didn't there. So that was a little bit experimental. And then I must have come back here and tried to recreate that same thing on the GarageBand instrument. Let's take a listen to that. Yeah, it doesn't sound as good, does it? I have a lot of thoughts, but I may not... So that's going to help me because they're the sort of melodies I thought were going to work well. So the, the guitar... The vocal, this one's going to probably be pretty stripped down. Guitar, vocal, might not even have any percussion, or maybe it will just have a... T -t 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 
like some real sort of soft drums. I might finally download that soft drummer app that folks have been recommending and get some soft drums in this one. So that is uh, that is that song, Fence Sitter. Uh, did I play? Did I play the chorus of that? Let's just find the chorus uh, so you can be reminded of what it sounds like. But you won't even know. When you're just so this is the uh, pre-chorus section. I'm a fence sitter. Sometimes I like to keep my thoughts to myself. It's easier facing up to the conflict. So, um, what I might have been doing, so you can see here also, last time I had this, I had this little two that's up here that you might be able to see. And I've got these tracks both armed on different tracks. So maybe I was recording MIDI and the actual stereo audio at the same time. That's interesting. That's an interesting concept. Hmm. Maybe I'll put that in the notes here. Maybe I'll do a video on how to do that because that could be a cool thing to do. If you wanted to capture, say you wanted to capture the sound like I did here with the original piano sound, but then you also wanted to capture it with a virtual instrument in case you wanted to edit it or change the instrument afterwards. Hmm interesting isn't it i uh, might experiment with that with this song when i record that piano part properly with the right notes for this maybe that's something i'll experiment with now this one i think yeah it's definitely not on the grid let's just make sure and i know nah. not everyone's this way so this one will probably stay off the grid so it means that i won't be able to use any sort of rhythm instruments or virtual instruments or things like that um, because there's bits where it sort of speeds up and slows down there's a music word for that music theory people will be saying it's this uh, i can't remember the name of it. Uh, i didn't do well in theory uh, let's just say that um, i did do music in high school but only till about year 10 and then i just stopped so I've forgotten most. I've forgotten more than I've learnt. Uh, although I do know, I was telling my children that the piano forte is called the piano forte because piano means soft, or quiet, and forte means loud. So it's a piano forte is actually called a soft loud because yeah, if you would have seen that, like play it piano means to play it softly, play it forte means to play it loudly, and it was called that because original harpsichords actually just plucked the string. So no matter how hard you hit it, it was the same pluck. Whereas a piano had hammers, it was the first thing that they did where it hammered it, and therefore the harder you hit the key, the harder the hammer hits the string, the louder the sound. You could actually make your sound forte. Isn't that amazing? Aren't I full of it? Or full of something? Anyway, <laughs> let's say that of that one. So we're pretty good to go here. Now, uh, Jade did mention, I'll, I'll throw it out here that Jade, uh, Jade mentioned that she did send me the, the version that she put together in GarageBand for um, the fifth song that may be on here. So what I'll do is I'll jump back over here. We'll have a quick chat. And Jade, if, if I've got permission to, I will try and download and bring that one across here in this stream now so we get all five, some sort of version of all five songs. So let me know if you're still here. Let me know if that's going to be cool. The only problem is that if you've sent me a notification through Facebook, I think I'm still having issues with Facebook here. Anyone else having Facebook problems? I know it seems to have popped up now, so I'm just, uh, I'll just jump over here and see if I can get this sucker downloading. Um, yeah, it's still really slow on Facebook. Um, so this is, uh, things have changed, so Jade's sent me this, and you can't see this right now because you don't need to see all my, all my Facebook stuff, but I'll, I'll see if I can go in here and download this now and then throw it over onto my iPad and then uh, see if we can have a quick listen. Uh, I always love listening to the stuff that Jade puts together. Anyway, that is downloading. Oh, that has downloaded, I think. Uh, yeah, cool. So there it is. So, yeah, so it's so probably just the backing track, so it's a fairly small zip file. I will uh, put that over here. Put that file over here. Boom. And then what we will do again once i have confirmation that i'm allowed i'm sure i'll be fine to do this i'm sure jade will will not mind me doing this then uh, yeah i'll bring that on over and take a look but while we're while i'm waiting to do that let's see if there's any other questions here we did say good day to our friend friend of the goats mr valium fm and then oh we've got some catching up to do here i've been ranting solrak great to see you here my friend fry russell is here on board having a look um do -do -do -do. 
Optimizing performance is a great way to get the stems out of GarageBand. If you move your projects to Audio Share, open it in there, look for the freeze files, you'll see your audio stems. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I did, uh, I did a video about stems. If you search Pete John's stems, I show both the solo and export method, and I show that method as well, the Audio Share method, where you can go in and get your AIF files. And if you want to force it to do that, just merge all your tracks into individual WAV files that are the full length of the track. And then you can go in and extract those. If you don't know what I mean, just search Pete John's Stems and you'll find them. Jade has, Apple, has uh, put Dan Baker's channel. We were talking about Dan and uh, his work in the past. So there you go. Um, um, so yeah, so Jade said it's very basic, but it's what I sent to help the creative juices flowing. Yes, excellent. Uh, so I'll go in and have a look at that. What's a TRRS? So TRRS is tip, ring, ring, sleeve. It's the different connections. And again, I keep, I sound like I keep promoting my videos, but uh, the reason, I, whenever I get a question more than like two or three times, I basically make a video that explains it. That way, instead of repeating myself and saying the same thing again and again, I just say, go find this video. So if you search Pete John's TRRS, you will find a video where I tell you the difference between TS, a tip sleeve, a unbalanced cable, a TRS, which can be either a stereo cable or a balanced cable, and a TRRS, which is your little four pole connector that you use for things like smartphones and laptops that send both stereo audio out and mono audio in as a microphone. So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, Jupiter Fall, any options on metal? Ooh, the, 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 any oh, opinions on metal? I like metal. I think I've talked about metal uh, on a recent show. Uh, I'm not a big metal head. I don't, uh, I don't know all the different styles and I'm not into the, just sort of the very hard metal, but I love a lot of sort of rap metal, melodic metal. Um, yeah, the, the, I, I run the gamut. So I do like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, th th this may be the video that, uh, that, Jade's that I was talking about that Jade's linked to. Or maybe she's linked to some other channel. Uh, Johnny Vance has the AT2020, and I love it. Yeah, I guess every mic is different. For me, uh, bassy, raspy, blues thing I've got going on works well. Yeah, it, it really does. So the thing with the AT2020 is it's nice and flat, so it doesn't have a lot of flavor or character, I would say, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, it's really good at just picking up what you throw at it. So it doesn't have a bunch of boosts or cuts or anything in, in its uh, in its frequency response, and it's really nice and clear. So it basically gives you a blank canvas to then construct whatever sound you want around that. So for someone starting out, it's really good. And it's a really good buy. I think it's only 99 or maybe Sweetwater have got it for like 79 They did at one stage. Let's just have a quick squiz um, while we're doing this because... Uh, I'll do, this is welcome to the promotion hour with Pete Johns here on Studio Live today. But no, we'll have a quick look. I'll bring up my screen. We'll share my screen. So we'll have a look at that. So if you do, if you are in the market for gear, you can go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear or go to the main site and then go to the studio gear guide here as I'm doing here. And uh, let's just see. At the top here, you got Pete's current setup, or at least as it was of April. So I do need to update this to May, although I don't think I've changed anything and all the different recommendations. So my current recommended mic is indeed the Audio-Technica AT2020, as you can see there. Well, let's jump in and take a look at that one. You will see the AT2020 in action, by the way, soon. Uh, oh, it's 99 down from 119 Yeah. So $99. Do they have them in stock? Oh, they're actually in stock. <gasps> Jump on it. <laughs> I don't want, at the risk of sounding like one of those home shopping networks, they're like, oh, operators are standing by now. Limited stock. Get in fast. Uh, but seriously, <laughs> seriously, everywhere has limited stock of everything. So at the moment, finding something that is something that I actually like, that is actually in stock, uh, it, it, yeah, it's kind of cool. But yeah, this is what you get. Comes with that. Get, has a little stand uh, and the bag. And yeah, it's just an all-round side-addressed uh, condenser microphone. It does good things and it's worthwhile. So there you go. Um, but yeah, glad you like it too, Johnny. Uh, I enjoy mine as well. Um, continuing on, <laughs> how about a scar version of goats for the EP? I totally have to do a scar version. Goats to have it easier. No, yeah, like goats to have it easier than me. Anyway. Uh, Jade has got the Rode NT1. Yeah, Rode NT1 is a good mic as well. Uh, there's there's two Rode mics, and we won't get off on a giant tangent here, but there's the NT1 and the NT1A. Uh, if you want to compare, by the way, if you want to compare microphones and stuff, uh, go to Podcastage. So my buddy Bandrew over at Podcastage has the best microphone reviews. Like, it's not even a, not even a competition. He does all the stuff. So... 
when I talk about mics, I'm like, it sounds good. I plug it in and it works. He does the, all the testing, all the different thing going around the microphone. He tests it at different levels. He tests it with different gear. He does it for spoken word, for music, for audio. Uh, so yeah, so if you're in the market for something like that, uh, my, my phone's telling me low battery. It's saying, Pete, you've used up an entire iPhone worth of battery. You're clearly ranting and rambling. Um, but yeah, but of course, that all comes at a cost if you buy something like this. So if you want something like the Rode NT1, yeah, you're paying a little bit extra there to get the full kit and caboodle there with the nice uh, built-in pop filter and uh, and shock mount uh, for the Rode NT1. Then, yeah, about $270. Um, but yeah, down from the retail price of $395. So it's still a good, good deal if you are looking for something like that. But uh, yeah. Oh, I've got my camera up like that. <laughs> when I go to this view, it brings my camera up as well. Uh, cool, cool, cool. And Jay says she's loving the Magic Keyboard. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to have to investigate and get one. Does it float? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're talking, everyone talking about Magic Keyboards there. Uh, da, 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 da. Dongles is the best word ever. You're right. Dongles is definitely the best word ever. Uh, we've got folks <laughs> confirming that we do have the uh, we do have the sound sounding good, which is good to go. Um, and yes, and Jade's shared my stereo keys video. This is how far behind I am. I'm, I'm only up to there. Uh, Johnny Van says that song Fence Sitter is good. Oh, cool. Doesn't need anything that would take away from it. Yeah. So what I'll probably do is I'll record with the good old uh, AT2020. When we get into the recording phase, I will record uh, the guitar and then record the vocal, just a two track, and we'll come back and share it here and we'll see what it sounds like and you can tell me what does it need. And then I, I, I want to try that little, um, maybe even, for, even just for the second verse, some just soft keys in the background and see how we go with that. We will give it a go. Uh, Michael Turner, hello to you. I did see you here earlier, but I don't think I said g'day, g'day. Uh, I've got MR Clayhead. Be watching your videos all day, Pete. Oh, thank you very much. I hope you're getting some uh, some value out of that. Um, yeah, let me know. Let me know how you go. Uh, Lucas. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the kind words from you there as well. Uh, scrolling on down. Uh, <laughs> someone says, if you haven't liked the stream, uh, like it. Yeah, sure. Um, feel free to, if you're getting some value, um, there you go. Thank you. If you haven't liked, like the stream. Uh, yeah, if you are getting some value, uh, let me know. And Jade has said, sure, very cool. And it's only one megabyte. Excellent. So it's the right file that I've got there. We will bring that across and we'll do some live inspecting uh, of that last uh, that last track in a moment. Uh, hello to Jack Smith. Good to see you here, my friend. Uh, Jack, was just uh, was it you that was telling me that you just got the iRig Pro Duo? Um, I think it was you or it was someone that also had an American flag in their background. Uh, but yeah, the really cool interface as well, the iRig Pro Duo. Uh, Raid says, barely hear you over the track. Yeah, sorry, I'm... I've got the the volume up high, and when I'm playing that and I'm trying to talk over it, I'll, I'll stop doing that because, um, yeah, it won't work. Uh, Jade used the Ravenscroft. Oh, oh, we'll see if I have the Ravenscroft installed on this iPad. That could be our only uh, our only problem. <laughs> that could be our only issue. Uh, we'll see in a minute. Sol Rack says, "Hey, can I send projects ideas here to the comments so people can collaborate in the future?" Like the links. Um, yeah. So uh, I said in yesterday's show. Normally, what what YouTube does is if you're if you're if you're putting links and things in in your comments, uh, it'll flag them. I'll make sure I go in and remove them. So I'm happy for folks to share anything you're working on because this is going to be a bit of a collaborative month. Um, yeah. If you want to share links to things, obviously don't go nuts and go, "Hey, here's my new single. It's fire." And every comment is just people sharing their music. But if you genuinely want other members of the community to check out what you're doing and comment on it, then by all means do that. The other option is uh, over on the Create, Record, Release Facebook group. Uh, you can jump over there and share a lot better as well. Um, Jade says, it seems everywhere got stock of the AT2020 over the last week. Ah, cool. So it may, it may even be back in stock at Amazon. I haven't checked. And I know Store DJ um, and DJ City here in Australia were out of stock, but I think there might have been the same thing. I was I was in Derringer's, one of our music stores here in Adelaide, asking about how they were going with stock levels. And they said, oh, actually, it's pretty good at the moment. <laughs> Funnily enough, um, especially the in-store stuff, they've actually got quite a lot of stuff because no one's actually going out to buy things in stores. <laughs> uh, Jeff says, uh, yeah, the AT2020 is 150 in Canada. Yeah, I think it's... How much is it here in Australia? Let's just do a quick check. Store DJ AT2020. I think it's 169, 149. Actually, that's a good price. Might buy another one. <laughs> Might buy a spare. 149 and is it in stock? Oh, uh, good question. 
It's taken a while to come up here. Yeah, in stock. 20 plus in stock. They got them all. I think I think the similar thing happened with microphones that and audio gear that's happened with toilet paper. I don't know what it's like in other parts of the world, but we had a problem here. So in late March, as happens everywhere in the world, uh, everyone just started panic buying everything. So you couldn't buy toilet paper, pasta, cleaning supplies, hand sanitizer, anywhere. Uh, then, you know, for a while there, every time I went to the supermarket, I'd just go to those aisles and occasionally you'd get like a four pack of bog roll. And then after a while that started coming back in. It was like, oh, look, there's, there's stuff back in. And Facebook was full of messages saying, hey, it's back in at this place. Oh, it's back in at this place. Now, I walked past the supermarket the other day and out the back where all the storage sort of sheds are, there is a mountain of every brand of toilet paper imaginable. So I think the same thing's probably happened with the, uh, the home recording industry where they're like, everyone wants to home record, quick. Suppliers, get us all the stocks of everything, um, which might mean maybe we'll have some uh, some discounting in the near future. That could be good. We're getting off track. Um, where am I up to in the chat here? I might have to just uh, remember where I'm up to and then come back, finish off with this uh, this track, and then see where we're at at the end. Yep. Uh, yes, it was me. It was Jack Smith. Uh, and that, that's where I'll pause there. So that's at 10.31 a.m. my time. And it was Jack who said he he has just grabbed the iRig Pro Duo, um, which is the other way to go. So we will come bring back over here. Uh, in the video that I did yesterday, I basically went through and said, here's all the different troubleshooting stuff you can do for an interface. If you're connecting it via USB, using the genuine Apple one, using a powered USB hub to make sure everything's powered up. And then right at the end, I said, and if you don't want any of that hassle, buy the iRig Pro IO or the iRig Pro IO Duo because that you don't need this. You don't need the powered hub. Yes, it does use power from your iPad or your iPhone, but it's yeah, it's the best way to go. And if you do plug it in via USB and use this, so if you still, if you still do have this, you can actually plug it with the USB connection and then power this. So that's another tip for you. If you find, Jack, that you've got it and you're running out of power, you can either buy the genuine iRig power adapter, but then you still can't charge your iPhone, right? But if you get this instead, it's actually about the same price, $39. And I reckon the iRig power adapter is about $39 or around that mark as well, 30-ish. But if you get this, just use the USB cable instead of the lightning cable and then plug this in and you're golden. So yeah, extra tip for you there. If you find you start using it, you're running out of power or you're losing, you're not being able to power up your iPad, then uh, grab one of these anyway and yeah, you'll be good to go. All right, uh, let's try. So I've got this. So it may not, the only reason it may not work. In fact, let's uh, let's see. If I go to the App Store, in fact, if I go here, what is it? The what did you say that we used? Um, Ravenscroft. That's what it is. So do I have the Ravenscroft installed on? I do. I have got it installed anyway. Uh, oh, we'll say ten percent battery. It's saying Pete, get a move on. You got ten percent, buddy. You need to get started. So let's let's do this. So I'm going to show you the little trick that I use here. If I go to Actually, I'll just, I'll disable this for a moment. We'll come back to my mug while I do this, just in case there's any, because I, I use Audio Share to share projects and I use it for client work and other things as well. So I just want to make sure there's nothing on here that I can't show you. Uh, no, that's all my stuff. That's all my stuff. That's all my stuff. There's nothing there. Nothing there that identifies anyone but me. So that's all cool. Uh, so what I'll do now this on this particular iPad, it's very messy, but I'm here if you don't have audio share Like if you've got six dollars and you don't own audio share go and get audio share right now because you need it uh, So this is audio share and it's got this cool little option here the Wi-Fi drive option if I tap that on and if I tap on this What it's going to do is it brings up this little local thing that we have here and what I can do now is from my web browser I can actually go to that website. Uh, let's just type that one in. It should be here. Uh, so what is it? It's air-head but2.local. We're getting there. Local. And oh, that doesn't work. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll just put in the uh, the uh, IP address. This, this particular one has a weird name, as you can see there. It's like, uh, oh, no, I should be able to do it. ACP air colon head dash two dot local and boom is it going to work drum roll please uh but, but yay it has so i'm not showing you that screen am i let's show you the screen boom there you go 
So what's happening here now is that this is connected via Wi-Fi drive and everything I have in my audio share folder on my iPad is now also over here on my desktop. So the beautiful part about this is that this file that uh, Jade has just shared with me, to bring this across to audio share, all I need to do is literally drag it and copy it. And that's it, it copies it, it's boom, it's there. So this is a really quick and easy way to get things copied across and uh, yeah, I just have to find it. There it is, things have changed, dot zip. And the same thing, if I wanted to re-download it, I just click on that. So it's a great way to get stuff to and from your uh, iPhone or iPad, audio share, Wi-Fi file sharing, very, very cool. Uh, so let's jump back over here now. <laughs> I've literally, I've got two mice and two keyboards going on here. Uh, I'm going to get used to this by the end of the month, but uh, yeah, it's going to be some, going to be some fun time. So now we can just go done on there. And now if we actually, what I'll do is I'll go to, I'll go to files. So we'll come in here we'll go to the files app so that we can unzip this sucker. Files and then uh, audio share files. And then we need to find things have changed the zip file. If we tap on that one, it'll open up and this should be Jade's project ready to go. In fact, what I'll do before I do this, we'll select it, we'll tap it. Still showing there? Yep, still coming through. <laughs> this phone's about to die. Uh, and then we'll move it over to my EP. Boom, copied Dunsky. Now when we go back into GarageBand, there it is. Let's bring it up and take a listen. So, yep. It's going to work. Yep, we've got iSymphonic, which I've got installed. We've got Ravenscroft, which I've got installed, um, which is handy. So, yeah, so we'll take a look. Oop, there we go. We'll take a look and a listen to this. So we've got a couple of pianos there. We've got the Ravenscroft doing some piano work. We've got uh, iSymphonic playing something. I don't know what instrument that is, but we'll find out in a minute. And then we've got some drum and upright bass. A little bit of drums there. Another iSymphonic instrument. Let's, uh, let's take a listen to this, and this is Jade's arrangement of my song, um, which is Things Have Changed. We'll see what you think of this one. Okay. I might try, should I try and sing along? I think this is still the intro, maybe? Of the same, everything's changed. Even the sun doesn't feel so bright today. When will it end? When can we leave? Right now, I'd settle for a small reprieve. It's been a week. Feels like a year I'm doing okay But you're not near Are you okay? Do you feel fine? How are you doing? Surviving in this new design I don't know how long It's gonna last but like everything this too shall pass this too shall pass Pretty strong, Jade. Just quietly might be stealing that whole arrangement. 
<laughs> oh, J- J- the whole credits are just going to have to be Jade's name there because she's already got the drums on No Apologies. Uh, if we include this one in the EP, uh, she's already done <laughs> the arrangement of the song. That sounds really cool. I like the uh, the ice symphonic strings coming in there. Uh, the mixture of the different piano sounds is really cool with the Ravenscroft. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a really cool, really good idea of what this could sound like, I think, is more of that filled out arrangement. My original version was pretty much just the piano chords. Uh, which I, I like as well. This will be another one, a bit like Fence Sitter. This will be one that we'll have to uh, we'll have to check out and see where we land with. Uh, now, this this phone that I'm using here has about three percent of power left, so it's about to go off. So before it just goes out in a blaze of glory, we'll bring back over to here. We'll say thank you for joining us. That phone. We're going to leave. Bye bye. So I can put that on charge <laughs> so that I have a functioning phone for the day. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're wondering what I'm using here, it's StreamYard. And what you can do, the beautiful part of StreamYard is you don't need to register when you do something. So all I did to get this working was send myself oops, put that over there, send myself an email uh, with the link to the StreamYard uh, video. And then I was simply able to... Um, yeah, just go on on this phone. And if I wanted to have three, four, five cameras, I could have just set up different iPads and phones in different locations and basically had a giant video conference with myself. But uh, yeah, it, it seems to work well for this. And next time I might try my better, my iPhone XS camera because it might be better than this one was. But uh, yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to try out, so there's other streaming platforms like Streamlabs where you can actually stream directly from your iPhone or iPad. I found that the the sync between the audio and the video is not that great with things like that, but we'll be experimenting as we go through. Where are we for time? We've got about 15 minutes left here in the stream. So if you do have questions or comments or suggestions or anything, please let me know. And uh, we'll jump back over here to the comments and see where I was up to. Oh, there you go. I was up to Jack Smith at 10.31. So we'll continue down from here and we'll catch up here. Mr. Clayhead, I'm learning a lot. Glad I found you. Thanks for making my life a whole lot easier. That That's 100% my job. And that's really what I'm, I'm wanting to do is to make make it accessible so music creation should be for everyone everyone should be able to do uh do the, what they want to to create their own music which is cool um johnny vans so probably talking about the at 2020 uh yeah crazy good for my use the bass response is surprising yeah uh, my shed 10 by 15 is my studio and it fills my room very well at 50 to 60 percent volume uh, might be talking about something else there <laughs> i've probably jumped in halfway through a conversation so apologies for that um, continuing on, um, does the iRig Pro Duo eat batteries, Jack? So I think, I don't think you have it yet, Jack, but yeah, you might be, um, you might be commenting on that anyway, but, um, yeah, the tip that I showed before is using the, uh, lightning to USB 3 adapter because the iRig Pro Duo actually comes with a lightning connection, but also a USB one. So if you have this adapter, you can use it as a USB plug and then plug this in and you're powering up everything. And the, the actual um, iRig Pro Duo only uses battery power for the, um, the phantom power. So yeah, that, that way you would get the best of both worlds. That would be my, my suggestion anyway. Uh, Lucas says, how do you suggest for me to do guitar on GarageBand? Because I... I don't have Oh, I'm everywhere. <laughs> Had a small issue. I was just saying how good stream. Streamyard was. Oh, it's not working. Pretending that everything is working okay, and hope that we actually pop back on. So if I've jumped off, and if I'm jumping back on, I apologise. We had a wee glitch there with the internet, and I think we're actually okay now. I think everything is good. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I've limited things down to where we're at. Probably lost a few folks when that happened. So apologies for that. Uh, but yes, guitar, I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about guitar in the future, but, uh, I don't want to risk losing the rest of the stream here. Uh, but good question. Um, guitar loops are good, uh, virtual guitar or collaborate, 
get someone else to to collaborate. Do do what Jade says here and head over to the Facebook group, create, record, release, and collaborate over there. Uh, cool. We'll continue on down here and see if we've got any other comments. Um, yeah, Jeff says I haven't found a good way to get an acoustic strum yet on a guitar. Yeah, talk talking about guitar, it can be a challenge there. Um, scrolling. Yeah, everyone wants acoustic strum. Yep. Maybe I need to do some acoustic strumming loops and uh, and make those available. As uh, I'll I'll consider that because I did some electric guitar loops. So maybe uh, we do that. Um, there you go. So honored to have you sing along to my version. Made my day. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and, and then it was so good, it destroyed the internet. So you can say that you and I together broke the internet, or at least it dropped my NBN connection here for at least a minute or two. But you know what? Show goes on. You just keep doing your things. Uh, thank you, Metallion. Appreciate your support there. Uh, Declan, thank you, my friend. Uh, Valium says, love that. Very, very cool. And uh, Jade says, uh, it's yours to do with whatever. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. And again, you'll definitely be getting the credits and the kudos. In fact, cr credits to Jade right now. Go over to Jade's channel, please. Um, check out her music. She's got some amazing stuff over there. Uh, U10 Cells, some of the stuff she does. Jade Star Dread Circus. There is plenty of stuff that you go need to go and check out on her channel. So go do that. Once this stream is over, go listen to some Jade Star music. You know you want to. Uh, hip pop. <laughs> hip pop. Pop the hippo to the hippo to pop pop pop. pop. Uh, yes, so Solrak, sorry for did I answer that before? Yeah, okay to share record on a project for fun. It's my own stuff. Uh, it, it's okay to yeah. It's it's only idea. Yeah, so yeah, if you've got ideas that you want to share, go for it. Go for it for sure. Uh, Sion, can I slightly remix it? Absolutely. Uh, I probably won't get to that track for a couple of days. So Jade, if you want to send Sion a copy, and Sion, if you want to do some mixing and you want to do, do some additions to to anything. Uh, let's let's collaborate. Let's do it. Let's get onto it. Um, yes, it did glitch. It did go away, and it did then come back. So yes, <laughs> there's, there's still some of you there. We did lose about ten folks who went, ah, oh, he gone, and now it's cool. Um, but yes, hopefully I am back now again. Uh, yes, or go to go to your website.